Our next guest is the creative mind behind some of your favorite children's books. Vashti Harrison created the images in the popular Hair Love. She's also the illustrator and author of Little Dreamers, Little Leaders, and Little Legends. Her newest book is called Big. In it, Harrison beautifully visualizes how hurtful words can stay with kids, and she encourages them to embrace their emotions and to love themselves. Ashley Harrison, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. So this book is so beautiful. And I got to tell you, I read it to my daughter last night, Marion and I, my wife, um, and it made me cry because the you describe a little girl who has a big heart, big dreams, a big laugh, but who grows and grows. And ultimately, the words that people use around her make her feel small. How did it come to you, this story? Mm. Well, the story's inspired by a lot of things, particularly my own childhood, my own feelings around my body, but really I wanted to be able to express something that's so internal and um, put it on the page so people can maybe you know, connect with the character on this really emotional level, understand maybe what she's going through, how she feels boxed in, and how she feels trapped by those labels. No, but I love in your author's note, you said, my size indicated to adults I was big enough to know better, even though I was still just a kid. Right. Mm. That's what got me too, mm, lad. Yeah. Yeah, you know, part of this story is mine, but it's bigger than me. I wanted to address bigger things in our society, like adultification bias of black girls and anti-fat bias as a metric for that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, it's an unfortunate thing, but I wanted to be able to express, you know, we should care for these kids and yeah. offer them the nurturing and innocence that they deserve. Well, because big is, I keep going back to, she has big dreams, big yes. heart, right. big laugh, but then big becomes a negative word. Yes. Right. Explain that to me. You know, I can't explain it. It happens in our society in ways that are so subtle. Um, and what I wanted to express is how when we use words with kids, we don't really know what's going to stick with them. Um, our society does have this sort of understanding of bigness, but I wanted to reclaim that for the character, mm. allow her to make more space for herself. And, you know, that happens kind of physically on the page, but you know, I hope that kids know that it's okay to make space for their emotions and for their feelings and expressing themselves. And you didn't give her a name. I kept thinking, what's her name? You, yeah. didn't, you, you deliberately didn't name I her. I did that on yeah. purpose, because you know, she's not me. She's not one girl. I wanted her to represent black girls and black girlhood, but I also wanted any reader to maybe see a reflection of themselves in her, or for you to see maybe a person you know in their story and want to share with them. And the pink matters here, too. Pink was yeah. a big deal for you. Pink was important. I wanted to stay fully within that character's perspective throughout the entire book. Um, but, you know, pink in color psychology refers to things like nurturing and care, and those are all things that this character deserves. So I feel like it's just a subtle way to create this kind of empathy for her. You've read this book to children. Um, what was the response that you received? It's been really good. Kids have a very strong sense of justice, so often, you know, really it's, kind of, it's kind of rough to read through some of the bullying and the, and the sadder moments, but they have very sense of, strong sense of justice and they want to stand up for this girl. And so I feel very confident that they are, you know, are ready, armed with the, um, the knowledge and care that it takes to, to live in this world. Yeah. You do this great thing as, a, as an illustrator by making the words physical, almost like weapons, mm. right? Like she's mm. being battered with them. And mm. then at a key point, she says, uh, these are yours. And she hands the words back to people mm -hmm. and they hurt me. Yeah. Mm. It's such a beautiful concept mm -hmm. that you draw. But then the writing also stands out. You've been an illustrator for a long time. Did you always also want to be a writer? No, I was scared to be a writer, but I realized I was a storyteller. And once I ha realized I had a story to tell, I kind of got over the fear of writing. Um, but this book doesn't have that many words. I wanted to really do a lot of storytelling with the color and the lighting and the composition. Yeah, you said even you're, you're very deliberate in your font choices. Yeah. I love how you're described, Vashti, as a, a best-selling creator. Not author, not illustrator, but a best-selling creator. I love that description of you. Yeah, I, I hope that it is an all-encompassing term because I want to be able to create stories that reach children, especially to meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. If it's not in books, maybe it's through, I don't know, other stories, television, animation, anything. Wherever kids are, I want to meet them. Well, we were saying the illustrations are beautiful. beautiful. You call them they word. Really are. There are some spreads that are no words whatsoever. You right. call them wordless spreads. Right. And what is your point there? Just 
the pure emotion of it you is know, when really we powerful. Can, exactly. When we can just kind of be a little bit more quiet. Books are very intimate. Sometimes yes. you might be a kid reading it alone or you're reading it at nighttime with a young person. I wanted those quiet spreads to, to give space to the story so we can really sit in those emotions and connect with the girl in the story. Well, we appreciate you joining us. The Bravo. book is incredible. So, it is. And so I know it, it. Well done. It's a children's book, but adults can take so much away from it. 100%. Yeah. Thank you so much. Big is on sale now wherever you like to buy your books.